All right. Brendan Power says, why does UEFA um, slash the Spanish Federation always put tough fixtures after the international break? Wouldn't you want the best players fit? We see how many injuries the international break causes. Wouldn't you want the teams in top shape for the best games of the year? Also, why the insistence on the Euros and World Cup? We've had congested schedules for the last year and then we go. Uh, The season ends and then Euros, and then the season starts midway through the season. We have a World Cup, and then back to the season. Will they prolong the season for next year? We already um, see all the injuries this year. Um, won't it be tenfold next year? Sorry for such a packed question. Well, the first part of the question about the scheduling and of the Spanish Football Federation and the UEFA with the Champions League and all, uh, scheduling their own, their their beautiful and big games after FIFA breaks I'm not sure it's actually intentional no if it is it's obviously it's obviously not doing a very good job just because of as Brendan mentions is is just at the service to to, to 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 every competition to have uh these big games after FIFA breaks where players are usually struggling with their condition and all but I, so it's I don't think it's intentional but at the same time I also you know, I see what's happened for the last 10 years or so, and it's true that, it, coincidence or not, it's it's true that this tends to happen, that Real Madrid tend to play uh, a tough Champions League uh, tie against uh, good teams in, in, in what should be exciting ties and exciting matchups, and then at the same time, the following weekend, they face either Athletic or Barcelona, so it's true that uh, they, they they tend to it, it's it's probably a coincidence, but at the same time I, I I think that you know the sample size is big enough for us to question that maybe they they schedule it at the uh, at the at the beginning of the season, but I, I I don't think so. So it's probably a matter of coincidence, but an unfortunate one for sure. It the the, the my biggest thing with the schedule, um, and again like that the schedule itself is pre drawn before the season starts, so you can't control like what. You know, you kind of know, I guess, in some capacity, like international break and the Champions League, and when when those are going to happen. But you don't know. Uh, you don't. You can't control like a classical being on the back of an international break because that's predetermined. But what I would say, when I hate and the, and I'm glad the the one of the silver linings of COVID is that we didn't have to do that this year. But last year was a it was something that really really bothered me when they did the Spanish Super Cup. In Saudi Arabia mid-season. And uh, part of the reason it bothered me is that you put your own teams at a disadvantage because you have to send four teams who are competing in Europe to a different continent um, during a season. While, like, like, let's say if Real Madrid, for example, um, ne- like when, when COVID ends, if it ever ends, when it like goes back to normal, fans are fans are traveling and stuff, and and fans are in the stadiums. Let's say Real Madrid draw Liverpool in the in the round of sixteen in the Champions League. Before that game, they have to go travel to Saudi Arabia and play this little tournament, and then come back. Meanwhile, Liverpool don't have that added schedule, so I feel like you're putting your own teams at a disadvantage when you're doing stuff like this, and and I, I, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me. Um, yeah. The, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, well, about the I wanted to mention that about the second the second part of the question and and you know why why UEFA and FIFA in, uh, keep insisting on 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 playing the Euros and and World Cups is just because there's money involved. Obviously, they have big sponsorships with huge companies. Yeah. You, we we all, we all always see huge companies advertising in the in the World Cups and all. And even though the the, the federation and the players themselves don't don't get money and don't get paid for participating in the in these international trophies UEFA and FIFA make a lot of money from him so it's just basically money talks here yeah uh, that's that's the issue and that's why like <clears throat> to me I've always been very vocal that there's too much football there just is I mean yeah, the players are yeah. being we talked about this a million times Cruz was vocal about this on this podcast uh, which was nice to see players come on and actually speak about this um for long NBA games, like there was just the, the season was too crazy, and they might actually start learning to kind of decondense it a little bit. Although the issue is always like lost revenue, so how do you compensate for it? Unfortunately, you have to compensate for it by raising ticket prices 
or doing more ads or the other solution which is not ideal for anyone is like you start entering this universe where where you you feel pressure to play less games and then all of a sudden to make up for it you start doing stupid shit like you have to have timeouts in football you know what i mean and like there's quarters and like you start doing ads and commercials during that that's basically the NBA's path. I, I think ultimately it's going to be you're just going to have a lot more commercials during a game to make up for or something stupid like that. So it's it's an issue and it's 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 hard to balance and you know it's they these guys will always it's a business that will want to make as much money as possible and so that will always kind of conflict it a, a little bit with with the uh, prioritizing the players' rest, unfortunately. And um, yeah, the whole World Cup thing, by the way, <clears throat> I still. I still can't wrap my head around that, that it's in November and December. Like, I don't get it. It's going to be so insane to do that in the middle of a season. I don't know. I don't know what they've, yeah. I don't know if they've landed on a solution on like exactly what they're going to do with the domestic leagues, but it just seems so crazy to me. I can't wrap my mind around yeah, it. Yeah, it's crazy. The first thing that's crazy about, about the whole World Cup is the fact that it's played in Qatar, to be honest. And after all, what's happening with the election of the of the host country and all, it's just it's just crazy that the tournament is going to keep going. And I'm as you mentioned, I'm I'm glad that Tony Cruz talked about talk, talked a little about about how how he feels about that tournament being hosted in in Qatar. No offense to to those listeners who might be listening uh, listening to this podcast from from Qatar, but um, after reading reports on how the whole election of the of the country happened and all, I just think that it's just a little bit crazy that the tournament is going to happen there. So the problem is nothing happens. It's all these great words from people like Cruz and stuff. And you know, Mina Raiola, who is not someone I usually pull up like quote of the day inspirational character but he had an interesting quote uh the other day where he says it's odd that we're putting the pressure on the players and so like getting upset at them for not taking a stand and boycotting the world cup or really like the change needs to be at the top like the players Mm -hmm. like so to in defense of the players we're putting them in a position where like this is the schedule you have to play you have no say you get no rest and if you if you don't obey, you're not going to get paid. And by the way, you're going to go to this country where there's a bunch of human rights problems mid season, and it's all it's all you. So like the, all of a sudden, the players they have to start taking the stand and and standing up for decisions they didn't make. Really, like this is like what has to be done. And you know, like I think someone in England or some of the players in England have been trying to wrap their heads around a boycott too. But it it can't be the players. Like the FA would have to step in and be like, "We're not. We're just not going to send England." Sorry. And if one country does that, the rest will follow suit. But you can't pin this on the players. I you know I respect for Cruz for saying that, and it's not his responsibility. Like I think I don't think any player is like crazy about this. Um, I guess that's subjective. You know, somebody like Zlatan will say we we're going to play the World Cup because it's everyone's dream to play in the World Cup. And that's the other thing, by the way. These people, these kids, these footballers, they eventually grow up. It's their dream to play the World Cup. Like, that's, they dream their whole lives about yeah. that. And, yeah. you know, so I think that the the FAs, the leagues, the federations, those are the ones, the, the entities that have to step up and oh, for sure. not so much the players. 